Women's cricket in Australia is finally back after 202 days. It was the world, the T20 World Cup final that was last uh, in women's international cricket played in Australia. And today, the match against uh, their match against New Zealand marked the beginning of the Australian summer. And the Australians have begun their summer convincingly with a win. New Zealand captain Sophie Devine won the toss and put Australia in to bat first. It was a uh, it was not a typical Brisbane pitch because the pitch was uh, holding up a little and uh, it was a little slow so slower balls were and variations were going to be very effective and that is exactly what the New Zealand bowlers did but what helped the New Zealand bowlers was some very poor shot selection uh, from the openers uh, Healy and Mooney and Quickly, Australia was three wickets down. Lanning seemed to be in very good form, though there was this entire lockdown and apart from warm-up matches, they haven't played too many matches, but Lanning did seem to be in good touch. But Sophie Devine was also in good touch, not only with the ball, but with her captaincy also. She was on point getting Tahu, of course. Who doesn't know the tahu Lanning uh, matchup? And Tahu bowled a beautiful fourth stump line. She got Lanning's wicket yet again. Lanning's average against New Zealand is generally 21, whereas against uh, like in her international career, his uh, her average is more than 42. And today also she got 24. But the main game changer for Australia was Ashley Gardner. She read the pitch. She played the ball according to its merit for the first few balls and then finally launched herself. Her 61 turned out to be absolutely the turning point and the most important innings of the match. Sophie Devine bowled superbly and she got three wickets but she would have got fourth if the uh, umpire had realized that uh, Nicola Carey had nicked that ball. But the beauty of that delivery was not the nick or the catch or that the umpire didn't understand. It was the, the cheeky smile from the batter after getting the knockout that was absolutely superb. Australia kept losing wickets and kept losing momentum during their batting. But they gained their momentum in the last ball of their innings when Varham hit the last ball for a boundary. That is when Austra that is from when Australia started looking absolutely convincing. Their bowling was on point. New Zealand never really looked very settled because even uh, Sophie Devine or Susie Betts couldn't get going. Only Martin was playing well, but then uh, she also was uh, held out. And the star bowler, I don't think it's a surprise because the last five uh, matches in which uh, she has played she has almost got an average of three wickets yes all of you i'm sure has guessed it right it's none other than megan shoot she got three wickets if you guys can remember she got three wickets in the world cup final against india today also she got four wickets a wonderful uh, bowler but a small trivia, she still doesn't have a 5 wicket haul in T20i cricket. But I'm sure she will get one very soon. There was also one more uh, huge difference between both the teams. That was their fielding. While New Zealand was very sluggish in the field, Australians looked that much better in the field. Diving around, saving runs, which matters. In a short form of format of the game, it really matters. And uh, Australian bowlers like Jess Johnson, Delis uh, Kimmins, they just en Delisa Kimmins, they just enjoyed the uh, conditions. You know, they bowled slower. The short, uh, the slower uh, bouncers were very effective, and they restricted uh, New Zealand. Won the first match. That was all about the first T20I between Australia women and the White Ferns. Do keep watching this space to watch the preview of KKR and SRH match and also the match between England women and West Indies women. Till then, bye-bye.